choir of the class, the assembly of the Sanhedrin, of the Pharisees, of the Sadducees, these people eventually thought about it, and it says many, many, a great company of the priests and the priests of the priests were obedient to the faith. Galatians chapter 1, reading from verse 14. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 14, and profited in the Jewish religion above many my equals in my own nation being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers that's paul he was Saul. he was into pharisaism but now when the lord called him he thought about it why would you waste your life why would you waste your skill on tradition? And he said, he profited, he was zealous of the tradition of the elders, his fathers. In verse 15, it says, but when it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb, called me by his grace. Here was somebody who had appeared to be incorrigible and inflexible in a tradition. But now he had the call of God as Christ appeared unto him. And the Lord called him by his grace. In verse 16, he said, to reveal his son in me. He fought against Christ, against the Son of God, against our Lord and Savior in the past. But now the call of God came to him through that same Jesus, and it says, he to reveal his Son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I confide not with flesh and blood. I pray that same mind to repent fully and to commit yourself fully unto the Lord and the word of the Lord. The Lord will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. Look at number two here. Number two here is total commitment to the permanent purifying truth. The truth that Christ emphasized the truth that he passed on to the apostles and they gave to us in the epistles. That's the truth, permanent truth. That's the truth, purifying truth. And we commit ourselves to that permanent, purifying truth. It tells us in Mark chapter 12, Verse 13, and this saint unto him certain of the Pharisees and the Herodians to catch him in his word. Look at that. To catch him. They were waiting for something. Every time there was opportunity for Christ to preach, and they, they would always come. They were they will come not to be converted, not to be transformed, not to have a change of life, not to get saved, and not to get to heaven, but to catch him in his words. Anyone like that today who comes to church not to repent, not to be converted, not to be transformed by the truth. Anyone like that today who only comes to catch the preacher in his word so that we'll have a reason to oppose him, a reason to criticize him, a reason to cut him down. Those people are like the Pharisees. Those Pharisees did not get to heaven. Their hearts were not affected by the words of Christ because their purpose of coming was to catch him in his words. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and when they were come, they say unto him, Master. Now, we must understand 
they were telling the truth now they had their purpose but the point is jesus was master the disciples called him master the apostles called him master all the believers called him master this is the truth although he's coming from them and they had an ulterior motive but it's the truth master we know that thou art true yes it's coming from ulterior motive but that's true that's true that jesus christ is true and cares for no man is coming from a wrong source a wrong frame of mind but that's the truth that jesus cared for no man he didn't have the fear of man but thou regardest not the person of man that's true but teaches the way of god in truth that's absolutely true and then they asked their question, which was to catch him. All they had said is the truth, that Jesus had the truth permanent, the truth purifying, the truth that if we know the truth, accept the truth, believe the truth, that truth will take us to heaven. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And if the Son shall set you free, ye shall be free indeed. He had the truth. He spoke the truth. Now they wanted to ask him the question that will trip him. We give the chance to people to ask questions. And disciples asked Christ questions. Tell us, what? shall be the sign of thy coming tell us what shall be the sign of the end of the world they ask questions disciples have chance to ask questions but they ask their questions out of a sincere heart pharisees also make use of the opportunity to ask questions but it was to be a question that will provoke him, a question that will set him up, a question that will set a trap for him, a question that will make the people not to believe in Christ. When you ask questions like that, you shouldn't be afraid to ask questions if you're a disciple, if you are converted, if you are a child of God, if the question is coming from your own heart, you really want explanation, that's good. You can ask questions. But when the Pharisees send you, and when they instigate you, influence you, and when they put words in your mouth, like they did here, the Pharisees sent them and they were going to ask a question. And he said some things that were true. And now they said, is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar or not? Why that question? Would it really affect them? Were they thinking they'll pay, they'll pay tribute, they'll pay tax or not? No. They wanted him to answer yes or no say yes pay tribute to caesar and the jews will not listen to him again and they'll block the way of salvation from their countrymen say no don't pay tribute and then the government will come and catch him he's teaching the people against the government they wanted to trap him if you're like that you're not born again if you're like that, you close the door of heaven against yourself. If anyone influences you, go ask this question. Provoke him. Trip him. Trap him. The people who sent you and you running the errand for traditional Pharisees, 
you miss heaven together if you don't repent the ask is each lawful to pay to give tribute to caesar or not look at the next verse in verse 15 in verse 15 shall we give or shall we not give but he knowing their hypocrisy said unto them why why now what's the problem is this the right thing to do why i came here to show you the way of salvation why I came to link you up with God. Why? I'm dying for your sin. And I want you to leave sin and come to salt. Why? Why are you trying to ask a question like this? We came to worship God. And we came to center our mind unto God. We want to be separated from the world. And we want to be attached to the Savior so that we can get to heaven. Why? My brother, why, my sister, this kind of question, why tempt ye me, bring me a penny that I may see it? And then in verse 16, it says, and they brought it, and it says unto them, whose is this image or superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. In verse 17, Jesus answered and said unto them, Render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God, and allow us to continue preaching the word of salvation. Your heart belongs to God. Give that to God. He created you. You owe everything in life unto God. Give yourself to God. He says, my son, give me thine heart. Let's leave all that kind of question. Let's prepare for heaven and give unto God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Let's look at number three here. Number three here, tender conscience for purposeful, profitable, teachableness the people were attentive when christ spoke to them they wanted to get to heaven they wanted to have the real grace of god that he brought from heaven so they listen isn't that supposed to be our attitude that we're attentive to the word of god the word from heaven that will change our lives in luke chapter 19 verse 47 luke chapter 19 verse 47 it says and he taught daily in the temple but oh they come again but the chief priests and the scribes and the chief of the people sought to destroy him in verse 48 and could not find what they might do look at this look at this for all the people were very attentive to hear him i pray that's how you will be all the people all the people they shunned the pharisees they shunned the scribes they said here is christ here is savior here is the redeemer and they were all attentive to hear him when we hear the word of salvation we should be attentive the word of sanctification and holiness we should be attentive and when we hear the word of god that is able to save us able to secure us able to preserve us unto life eternal it we, we, we kind of push aside every other interest and we're very attentive to hear him and i pray as we hear the word of god it will do good in every one of our lives in jesus name john chapter 6 verse 45 in john chapter 6 verse 45 it is written in the prophets 
and they shall be all taught of God. Every man, therefore, that has heard and has learned of the Father cometh unto me. They do not allow the traditional Pharisees to hinder them, to block their way. Every man, therefore, that has heard, and every man that has learned of the Father cometh unto me. In verse 47, in verse 47, very, very, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. Verse 63, it says, it is the spirit, the quickness, the flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. All the words we have heard today about rejecting tradition, all the words we have heard today about blocking the Pharisee away from us, all the word we have heard today of his salvation, of the holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, of giving our hearts, our mind, our soul, everything to the word of God. I pray it will be a fruit in every heart. It will be a fruit in your life. And then you have eternal life, abundant life, a purified life, a transformed life, a gracious life with the grace of God coming into your heart, into your life in Jesus' name. God will keep you in that salvation, in that sanctification and will keep you in total commitment and devotion to the word of God and no Pharisee, no religious traditionalist will be able to pull you away from the path of righteousness in Jesus' name. Amen. Rise up and tell the Lord and give yourself and commit yourself totally and completely or reservedly unto the Lord. Let the Lord himself do that work of grace in you and all those uh, traditional things and traditional opinions, traditional ideas, traditional religiosity that the Lord will wipe everything away and then uh, you will be totally converted, transformed by the Lord and there will be no uh, wall of demarcation between you and the Almighty God. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone to a great service this morning in Jesus' name. I pray that your presence here will meet with the presence of the Lord himself. And his presence and power provision will be in every life in Jesus' name. And I pray that with all your heart, with all your mind, without any distraction your heart will be centered on the revelation of the word in jesus name and the blessings of god will multiply in your life father we well, thank you for this hour thank you for this service thank you for your people here and everywhere we're asking, O oh Lord, that revelation of your word will do good in every life in Jesus' name. And I pray that this revelation will wipe out every preconceived idea which is not according to your word in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that 
the blessing of your word, the blessing of the scriptures will all fill every heart and every life today in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Matthew chapter 15. And in Matthew chapter 15, we're reading from verse 1. It says, Then came to Jesus scribes and Pharisees, which were of Jerusalem, saying in verse 2, Why do that disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? For they wash not their hands when they eat bread. Verse 3, But he answered and said unto them, Why do ye also transgress the commandment of God by your tradition? Here we find the conflict between the truth and tradition. Here we find the conflict between the scribes, the Pharisees, and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Redeemer, and our Lord. Here we find the conflict between man and God. Between man, the hardened man, and the holy God. And we need to take a stand. And the Lord will be asking us, where do we stand? And in eternity, as you want to cross over to the other side, what will determine your eternal destiny and your eternal habitation is on which side did you stand when you were here on earth? Did you stand on the side of the traditions of the elders or do, did you stand on the truth revealed by Emmanuel God with us we're looking at the message today standing for redemptive truth against religious tradition standing we have to stand somewhere either for religious tradition or for redemptive truth standing for redemptive truth against religious tradition we're dividing the message to three parts number one the cause and the cost of religious tradition number two the consequence of corruption through rigid tradition number three true conversion and commitment to redemptive truth. Look at number one. In number one, the cause and cost of religious tradition. Look at Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 3. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, except they wash their hands out, eat not holding the tradition of the elders. They were not holding the recommendation of the doctors. This is not about health care. This is about religion. It's about tradition. It's about the conception of the scribes and the Pharisees. When you wash your hands on the recommendation of the doctors, that's why hygiene. That's for your health. You don't want to catch disease and you don't want um, bacteria or any bad thing that look invisible to the natural eye. But they're real and they can corrupt you and they can give you disease. So on the doctor's recommendation, on the basis of health, they tell us to wash our hands. You go to the restroom before you come out, wash your hands. In fact, everywhere, anywhere you go, you wash your hands when you come back. Now in this pandemic of COVID, of the COVID of a thing, we're told to sanitize our hands. 
that one recommendation of doctors because of your health but this one this one has nothing to do with the doctors this is the tradition of the elders and and it is not in the old covenant either you don't find it with moses or david or the prophets this is not the revelation of god this is the tradition of the elders it came in after the close of the old testament after malachi these pharisees rose up and they called themselves the protectors of the word of god and they had quite they added quite a lot to the word of god and they had these laws more than 600 laws that they compiled together and it became more significant to them than the word of God. The Pharisees and all the Jews influenced by those Pharisees, except they washed their hands off, that means often, they did not hold in the tradition of the elders. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, it tells us, and when they come, from the market except the wash the eat not and many other things i told you more than 600 things they compile together many other things there be which they have received and to hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables even of tables look at verse 5 it says in verse 5 then the pharisees and the scribes asked him why walk not the disciples according to the tradition of the elders but eat bread with a washing hands in verse 6 verse 6 he answered and said unto them well as Isaiah prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written these people honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me verse 7 it says in verse 7 how be it in vain do they worship me those who hold the tradition of the elders and they are not holding on to the doctrine of Christ they worship in vain their worship might look beautiful and attractive and imposing but all the same because they do not hold to the truth that brings salvation they do not hold to the truth that brings sanctification they do not hold to the truth that makes them serve sincerely in vain do they worship me teaching for doctrines not only one doctrine all their doctrines as a kind of smear or snake